what's the deal with Tampa, Florida, and why are so many people moving here? At the time of this recording, we're having about 115 people move here every single day. That equates to about 42,000 people in one year, and that is a tremendous amount of growth. We've got people from all over the country relocating or investing in Tampa, Florida, um, and there's a few reasons. There's lots of reasons, actually, and I'm going to share those with you today, but I want to share with you my top five. Um, these are the, the top five reasons I found since living here going into our fourth year, and these are the top five that also got us to move, too, so they're congruent, and I want to share them with you all today. <music> everyone, Juan Alcala here with the True Living Group in Tampa, Florida. And if this is your first time to the channel, we do videos all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. If this is your first time to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video like this. And also, it will help other people who are interested in all things Tampa Bay as well learn about what's going on in the Tampa Bay area. And we are getting phone calls from people all over the country, just like you, who are considering buying, selling, relocating um, in the Tampa Bay area. And they're reaching out to us through text messages, phone calls. Uh, heck, I'm even getting uh, direct messages messages on Instagram and Facebook about wanting to move to the area here in Tampa, Florida. So if that's you, don't hesitate to reach out. However, you got to get hold of us here at the True Living Group. We've got your back. So let's dive right into our top five reasons why people are moving to Tampa, Florida, and they're all going to revolve around the quality of life. And I probably could have made this a number on its own, but everything touches the quality of life, right? Wherever you're living currently, uh, for whatever reason, things have changed. Maybe it's employment. Um, you know, Maybe you love where you live, but you, your employers decided that they're moving to Tampa, Florida, and then you're, they're requiring you to be there. Or maybe you just don't love the weather, or maybe you don't like the political environment. Uh, there's a whole litany of reasons that, that I see as a real estate professional at, and that um, I see in our community of reasons why people are coming to Tampa, Florida, but the main one, the, the overall, the, the, the encompassing reason is because the quality of life here is outstanding. It's outstanding, y'all. And uh, of course, there's some negatives um, and there are going to be negatives no matter where you move. There's always pros and cons. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I did a full breakdown of pros and cons this year. Um, and you can find that. We'll link that in the description below or put it at the end of the uh, the video as well. So you can get a link to that and check that out. I, I break down everything. Y'all trust me. Um, I get <laughs> graphic about some of the things we don't prefer and I'm just going to shoot it like it is. I try to tell everybody because, you know, I'm a former Midwesterner. We're from Detroit, Michigan. Originally, I packed up my family three and a half years ago, moved down here and we've never looked back. I'm going to be honest with you. We absolutely love our new life here in Tampa, Florida. And Tampa was not the first place that we were considering when we looked at moving to Florida. We were looking at other areas like Jacksonville and Fort Lauderdale and Port St. Lucie and, and Orlando and all these other areas that you hear. And when we came here, we were just blown away at not only, you know, um, the beaches and everything else that goes on in Tampa, but just how it felt, you know, it felt very homey. People were very welcoming. Um, and we've just absolutely learned to love it. So sorry to go tangent on that guys, but I just like to share and give you some context because I've done it and I know it's not easy. We put together a huge list. We searched so many websites and I'm going to link those down below as well. You can always find those resources in the description below of my videos of things to look up, um, how to find, you know, Know, information about schools and housing and everything else under the sun. Um, you know, but I always put that below so you guys can do that. And hey, if you've got any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I'd love to answer those for you. Me and my team are standing by to do that. Um, or if you got a specific video you'd like to have made too, I'd love to get to that for you as well. And without any further ado, let's get right into our list here. So number one on the list is an easy one and it's 
you know, one of the biggest reasons why people move here and it's the weather. Okay. And Tampa has on average about 250 days of sunshine a year, which is awesome. Coming from somewhere that um, did not have 250 days of sunshine. I felt like, you know, in, in Detroit, that we were lucky if we saw sun, you know, five times a month during the winter. And that's probably not true, but that's really how it made you feel. It was always gray and gloomy and coming here now, if it rains for two or three days straight, I can start to feel that um, it starts to mess with my emotions. And we used to live like that for months, you know, back home in Detroit. So it's so different. And this is part of the reason why people come, right? If you live in an area like Denver, where they have over 300 days of sunshine, then this is going to be a decline for you. But most, you know, everywhere else in the country doesn't have that many days of sunshine. So 250 days of sunshine is awesome. In terms of the temperatures, our average high during the summer can get up there a little bit, but we peak around 90 degrees in July and August. That's kind of, you know, when it gets pretty hot. And then in the winter, we get lows down into the fifties. We'll, you know, you can see some 40 degree nights, but that's very rare. Um, you know, honestly, I think we turned our furnace on for maybe six or seven days in total last year. And it's not like it runs all day. Um, our furnace probably kicks on in the middle of the night and in the morning during that time period. And then after that, you're good to go. You're going to open your windows during the day because the, the, the daytime temperatures are, you know, mid sixties, the low seventies during the winter. And that's awesome. And that's why people come here for sure. November, April, and March are by far our best months in terms of like pleasant weather. You're going to do anything and everything you want outside during that time period. Low to no humidity, great sunshine still. It's, you know, it's pretty dry overall during the winter months as well. So those are great months. And for us, I mean, basically from November on, we have our windows open all the way until about May. Um, and I tell everybody, it's like a... <laughs> The way Florida weather works is there's a somebody hits a switch. Um, usually the first or second week in November, somebody hits a switch and then the humidity is over with. And then at the first or second week of May, somebody hits a switch and the humidity is back. And it is relentless when it's here. So I want to just be transparent with y'all because when it comes, it comes. Um, but we, we just experienced our third summer and we're used to it at this point. You do acclimatize, it does happen. Um, and you can see that in, in, in the water temperatures. We're gonna get into the beaches here in a minute, but you know that winter stretch is absolutely incredible. It's why people move here. It's why we have what they call, what they refer to as snowbirds. Um, those are Northerners who come down for the winter. Um, and that's part of what's made Florida, Florida. You know, you have a lot of investment properties here. Um, you also have, you know, there are a tremendous amount of retires, retirees here. Um, but Tampa specifically has a lot of job growth and it's starting to get younger, which is, you know, that's cool if, if that's, you know, important to you. Um, part of the reason that we chose Tampa is because we saw that the direction was starting to head that way. Um, it was starting to get younger. There was starting to be more working professionals coming into the area um, and younger families come into the area as well. And uh, us having a younger family, we found that important. All right. Number two on our list is the cost of living. And this is another reason why we decided to move here. The cost of living in Tampa, Florida versus uh, major metropolitan areas is it's low. Um, and, you know, when you look at the numbers and, and again, I'll put the links down below where you can check those out. They have grown over the last year, just like everyone else has. Um, but in terms of scale, it's scaled with everyone else, too. So we're not California. We're not Austin. We're not Miami. We're not New York. We're not Boston. Our real estate is inexpensive when you look at those areas. Our taxes are low. When you look at those areas, our real estate's low and taxes is on our list. Um, you know, as a 1A type of thing here, um, because, it, you know, there's no state income tax here. So that is awesome. If you live in a place where, you know, your state income tax is 12% or higher, it, when you come here and you don't have a personal income tax, that is absolutely a huge raise. And that affects the overall cost of living, you know? So when you look at the cost of housing, when you look at the cost of property taxes, when you look, look at the, the, uh, the bonus that you get from not having to pay a, um, a personal income tax, it's huge. Um, I would say our state sales tax is a little bit higher. I only have Michigan to compare it to where it was like 4.3%. Here it is 7%. Um, so it is a little bit higher and it can be higher in the cities too. They charge a little, a little bit different amount, but 
overall, we keep more money in our pocket because of energy costs. We pay less money in energy here than we did up north. Um, our tax rates are lower. Our income tax rate doesn't exist. Um, and the cost of living and housing was less. So like, it was just a no brainer on that end. All right, now we're going to start getting into some of that fun stuff. And this is the one that locked us down. And what I mean, when I, what I mean by that is uh, my wife and I came to, to Tampa um, and she was pregnant with our youngest at the time, who's now you know going on four here. Um, and uh, my son and my daughter, we traveled around the city here and we just fell in love with it. We came down in the winter. It was January. I just left, left my corporate position and we were searching of what we knew we were going to make a move from the North to the South. And we started looking at these cities. We spent some time in Jacksonville. Like we talked about, we spent some time in Orlando. We spent some time on the East coast um, in the Stewart Jensen beach area as well. And then this was, it was the last on our list, really. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we just, we had never experienced it. So we weren't giving it a fair shake. And when we came, we were just absolutely blown away. The beaches here are unbelievable. um, And they just absolutely sucked us right in. And what I mean by that is when you're on the east side or the ocean side of Florida, um, the, the, it's the ocean, right? There is riptides and currents and, you know, huge storms and, and the hurricanes come through there um, at, you know, more often than they do on the Gulf side, but you can look up statistics for that. You know, if I'm wrong, forgive me, but um, I know that specifically St. Petersburg, Tampa has not been hit directly by a hurricane in over a hundred years. That is awesome. And that was something that was on our radar. But the big thing was, is these beaches, they've got these sugar sand beaches, award-winning beaches, whether it's St. Pete Beach, you got Clearwater Beach. If you drive an hour south, you can go to Siesta Key, which is another nationally, you know, that beach wins. It's like these beaches fight it out every year between this and Destin and and, uh, Panama. So we have world-class beaches here and they are, when you go, it's so hard not to love it. It's not a long way to the water, which is always nice. The the beaches are always super clean. Our water temperatures are awesome, y'all. Now in the summer, um, at, at the height of the summer, and we're talking about, you know, July, August, September, I told you our temperatures can get high, right? 90, 92, they can sit around there. Our average is 90, but our average water temps at that point can get about 85, 86 degrees. So they're basically, it's like walking and you just get wet. It doesn't really change. It's kind of, that part is strange. But the water is smooth outside of huge major storms. You know, we still have hurricanes that pass through the Gulf. We've been very fortunate. We have not had a direct hit here in a long time. Um, But even those, they just churn up the water. You you, you know, it's not, you don't have these big currents. Um, Overall, it's a much safer environment for, for young kids to play on the beach. And just in general, if you don't like an aggressive beach or you want to swim and you're nervous about those types of things, then the Gulf Coast is where it's at, y'all. Make no mistake about that. So our beaches are absolutely one of those things that if you come, just be prepared. You may never want to leave because that's typically what happens to people. And I know it happened to us. All right. If you are getting value out of this, please hit the subscribe button and click that little bell as well. Again, so you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. And that gets us to number four on our list today, which happens to be freedoms. Now, this, I don't want to get political. That's not the point of, of this. But the one thing that you do have to keep in mind is the reason that we're seeing this tremendous influx of people outside of just the weather and the economy is because there are more freedoms here um, than a lot of other places in the country currently. Can that change? The answer is 100% yes. Um, however, the, the governor of, of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has made it, made it known that he is going to keep the state open, he's going to keep our economy running, and he's going to keep the, the overall um, you know, people of Florida, he's going to give us our freedoms. And it has made a huge impact. And listen, again, this isn't about being political, but if, if you want to be somewhere where y- you can go and, and openly live your life and not have to be concerned about you know, outside forces, you know, making those decisions for you, then Florida is a great place for you. If that makes you nervous and uncomfortable, I'm telling you right now, this, this may not be the best place for you because um, people here have been living their lives the entire time we've been going through this pandemic. And it's, um, it obviously makes some, makes for some challenges for some people. um, But the most part, 
I would say this, that people are considerate of other people's decisions. And I think ultimately that is one of the greatest freedoms you can ever have is you have the choice. Do you want to participate in, in everything that you hear and see? You are absolutely welcome to do that. And no one's going to try to take that from you. Do you want to live your life and um, be respectful of others, but you know, be mindful of the fact that you are in control of you and your family? Then Florida is a really good place currently because that is how it is operating from a political environment. So again, I'm not trying to be political here. I just want you to understand because it, if you're relocating or if you or if you're considering relocating and one of those two things doesn't make Make sense for you. And I would strongly encourage you to do some more homework on that. Don't take my opinion for it. Um, do your homework, um, get it from re reliable sources. Um, I, <laughs> I would say that uh, TikTok and Facebook are probably not the best, but you know, hey, get it from where you get it from. I'm just sharing the truth, y'all. People are moving here. You know, I, they, they throw out terms all the time, but you know, people are moving here because of political environments. And I know this because I have clients who call me from, you know, from the West coast or from the Northeast or from the Midwest that are like, Hey, I don't, I don't like what's happening here anymore. We want to move there. And it's because of those freedoms. So if that's something that interests you, it's definitely on the list. It's part of the reason why people are moving here. All right. And we've gotten to number five, which is the last one on our list today. But this one's a big one. And this is also a contributing factor of why we moved here. And it's convenience. And I, what do I mean by convenience? Well, first and foremost, the, the Tampa airport or TPA is one of the best airports I've ever stepped foot in. It is incredible. And I used to travel for my corporate career. So I've been in a lot of airports. It doesn't make me the authority, so to speak, or the um, <laughs> the guru on airports. But you know, I've lived in all the big airports. Detroit was a hub for Northwest and for Delta for a long time. So um, you know, we got to experience a lot of those, those other airports traveling across the country. And it is quick it's convenient and it's clean. And those things make the airport awesome. There's also another airport in Clearwater. It's, it, the uh, airport code is PI, P-I-E. Um, and it's a regional airport. We have Allegiant flights that fly out of there. It's convenient. My dad lives um, in Ro uh, Rochester, Michigan. He'll usually fly out of Flint directly into Clearwater. And then I pick him up from there. It's super easy. Sarasota airport is less than 50 minutes south of here. Um, and then you've got Orlando, um, which is right in the middle of the state. Um, in the mouse's house there, which from Tampa airport to Orlando airport is just around an hour and 10 minutes, roughly. So you can see how convenient it is to go from Orlando airport to um, Clearwater beach. You're looking at about an hour and a half drive, depending on traffic. Um, so it's, it's really conveniently located. Now, I-75 is the major highway that comes right into Tampa. Um, it splits into 275 there and I-75. And then we have Highway 4 that runs from Tampa all the way to Orlando um, directly. So it's just really convenient. Now, uh, traffic is not wonderful. And we you can get into my pros and cons video and find out about all that stuff. But it just takes a little bit longer. And that's just because it's what I'm used to. The lights where I came from, the street lights, you know, if you're sitting at a stop, light, you know, you were usually moving again within 30 seconds. Our lights here feel like you could knit a blanket at them. <laughs> That's not true, but it feels like that way to me. Um, so I just wanted to share that perspective. And, and listen, y'all, there are so many great reasons why people are moving. I could do a list of 50, to be honest with you, but I wanted to give you my top five videos because when it comes down to it, when you're looking for reasons, why are people doing this? And maybe it's because you're considering making that move on your own. You know, the big, the big thing you're trying to get an answer is, is this the right move for me? And my hope and my goal is that this video in some way, shape or form help you accomplish that today. And if you're considering relocating or moving or investing in the Tampa Bay area, please feel free to connect with my team here at the True Living Group. Um, I'm a licensed real estate professional with eXp Realty. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation about what that could potentially look like for you. Um, and hey, however you got to get hold of us, whether it's email, phone call, text message, or even direct message through Instagram or Facebook or any of those sources as well. Whenever it comes to moving to Tampa, Florida, just know the team here at the True Living Group has got your back. And again, until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.